all item types can be entered manually. Here you see the type of items. Here here's are the sources, the receivers, the object, height line, height point, and the div items. In this case, we're going to enter some buildings, the source, and calculation points, receivers. Go to the building icon and click on the building icon. Then you see that your mouse changes in the crosshair. And then you can enter the corners of the polygon building by looking at your bitmap. And double click ends the entering of the polygon shape. Here you see the coordinates we've just entered. And here you can give the height of the building. Suppose it's 8 meters height. Okay, now we're going to enter this building. Click on the building icon, enter very roughly in this case the polygon shape of this building. And then double click. Okay, let's say you want to change the shape of the building because it's not exactly the way you want it. In this case, you can then select the building type and make a clear view so you can look through the building then you can click on the building and then move the individual nodes of the building to the correct location it's still of course quite rough because the bitmap is uh, quite rough but you will get the idea so now go back to the normal default view of the building type. So, here are two buildings entered. Let's say that here is a building and on top of the roof there are some cooling units. So I click on the building icon again. I'll just do it very roughly now. Let's say that this is the roof. And let's say the roof is on 6 meters. And then, now I have to make it transparent again, the building. And then on the roof, there are some cooling units. And let's say that I want to introduce these cooling units as a point source. So I click on the point source item, and I just locate it in the middle. This is a cooling, cooling unit. And now I can select a height relative to the item directly below. And that's quite convenient. Because now I can give, for instance, the cooling unit is one meter above the roof. And this means that the cooling unit now automatically takes the roof as its terrain model. Then here there is a nice Dutch windmill. This is a circular item. I also want to show you how to enter circular item. Then you use the right mouse click. Click on the circle. And then this is the bottom shape of the roof of the windmill that's oops it's four meters height and then the top one that's maybe fifteen meters height. Okay, so what we have done so far, if you look at the 3D view, we've added some circular buildings, polygon shaped buildings, and also on top of this roof we've entered a point source. Uh, with one, meters, uh, one meter height. Of course you can give the point source the sound power level by clicking on the emission and then selecting uh, for instance uh, one of the sound power levels in the database that's included in iNoise, for instance an air cooler. And you say OK. Now suppose that I want to calculate the noise levels on the facade of these buildings. And in this case I'm going to put it as a solid area again. So I want to put receiver levels, receiver points exactly 10 centimeters in front of the facade because if you put a receiver inside the building iNoise will skip it. So in this case it's easy to enter the snapping option for instance 0 0.10 meters. Then click on the receiver icon and then you see with the circle that iNoise is snapping to the closest building. If you then use a mouse click and give it for instance a 1, then it will automatically 
snap to the building at 10 centimeters in front of the building. I'm going to add some more receivers and now instead of using OK, I say OK and same. And that means that I can now continue adding receivers without the need of the intermediate uh, 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 dialogues. With right, ma right mouse click, cancel, I can stop the entering of receiver points. This is just a short example of how to enter items manually. Thank you for your attention.